Can you all hear me? Yes. Ah, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the Mayoress and myself for inviting us here this afternoon. And I'm glad it's turned into weather at least slightly better than it was when I left for my first engagement this morning. I'd also like to take the opportunity to bring greetings to you because I'm Secretary of the West London Trades Union Club in Acton High Street, which is similarly a cooperative club. And it's uh, again a privilege to be here representing, I suppose, them. And also I'm a cooperative party councillor. And that is also related to the Bradford Club. Because Fred Perry's, I seem to have developed a frog in my throat. And maybe I should hold this a little bit differently. Fred Perry's father, I was told earlier, I didn't realise this myself, was a cooperative MP. And, of course, the reason that we're here and the reason that the plaque has been presented to be unveiled in our imaginary fashion is because Fred Perry, who was, of course, a star of tennis, which I'm old enough just to remember, uh, lived round here and was brought up in the Ealing area. And so it is a privilege and a pleasure for three separate reasons to be here this afternoon and hopefully to enjoy the pleasant weather for at least uh, 10 minutes longer. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just um, enlarging that a little bit, I don't know whether people know that the, the, the Brentham Estate was founded as a branch of the cooperative movement and, and people built their own houses and, and uh, it, it, it's now obviously a private uh, people have their own, own their own houses, but originally it was a cooperative effort. And the club was the community centre, founded in 1911, 100 years ago. Um, and so the club, which is owned by the members, is very much a cooperative type of organisation. Uh, and it's appropriate, our banker is the co-op bank, and, and so on. Anyway, enough of that. Mr. Roger J. Draper, can I ask you to address it? Thank you, uh, John. Good evening, everyone. And uh, first of all, thank you for the kind invite for me to, to be here tonight. Um, first of all, it gives me an hour off uh, Wimbledon preparation. So this is a welcome relief. Um, and whilst it may sound extremely exciting, running events like Queen's Club and Wimbledon and Eastbourne and dealing with all the top players in the world, the, the best part of my job is actually coming to clubs like this and meeting people like you, because this is what tennis is actually all about and uh, whilst 30 million people will be watching Wimbledon uh, over the next uh, fortnight and you'll be watching some amazing tennis people take do tend to forget that it's sort of community clubs like this that really actually make all the difference and we're very fortunate in tennis to have some fantastic clubs some fantastic parks some fantastic coaches and volunteers who are all helping to drive uh, the sport forward so a big thank you to all of you for everything that you do for, uh, for British tennis. Um, of course, we're here to celebrate uh, Fred Perry. Um, whenever Fred's name's mentioned, I always have one of those sort of, you know, because obviously we're very proud of what Fred Perry achieved in, uh, in world tennis, but it's, it's also a bit of a monkey on our back because uh, obviously he was the last uh, British male player to win um, a Grand Slam. And uh, as John said, we're hoping uh, to uh, knock that one on the head uh, in a couple of weeks' time. I think Andy uh, at Queen's, he was the first British man since 1925 to win uh, the Aegon Championships twice. So um, hopefully that's a good omen for a few weeks' uh, a few weeks time. But Fred what was an amazing uh, character. And uh, for those of you who don't know, he did win eight Grand Slams. Um, he won Wimbledon in 1934, 1935, 1936. He was also an, an all-round sportsman as well, and I think he was table tennis champion as well in uh, 1929. So he was quite a formidable uh, competitor. And I think he started actually playing tennis uh, here at the age of nine. And just fast-forwarding a few uh, generations, it's fantastic for me to come and see you've kept that tradition going. I think whilst the equipment's slightly changed, Fred didn't probably have mini tennis nets and mini tennis balls. I think one of the great achievements of this club is I think over half or nearly half of the membership are juniors. 
and I think you know congratulations to you all for that because I know in this day and age it's really important that we get as many youngsters picking up tennis rackets as possible for community cohesion for the health and all the rest of it so it's great to see what you're doing for the juniors here and following in in Fred's tradition as well so um, on that note I think um, the mayor and myself are uh, now going to officially um, <laughs> unveil the plaque. So we'll put. Well, we can look like we've done it. There we go. Right. And a big round of applause for Fred Perry. So, th thank you, everyone. That that's the end of our um, unique ceremony of unveiling. And uh, please now, if you, uh, I know some people have to run, run away for an award ceremony somewhere else, um, but please, if you can stay, um, join us round the corner in the barbecue and um, uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.